There he is. That's a big one. Oh, God. Oh, God. Whoa, that's a freaking giant. So this is going to be a little different fishing trip than what you're used to seeing me do. I'm actually going to go kayaking for one. Then I'm going to double it up. Not only am I going to be kayaking today, I'm going to be kayaking on a very private lake. Like I just had to go through a gate code. I had very specific instructions not to film me going through the gate because it probably would make it pretty obvious where I was at. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna go to uh, Private Lake and see if I can catch some fish on my mystery tackle boxes. I just got in the mail yesterday. All right, so today I am gonna be using baits from my mystery tackle box that I got in this mail this month. Let's look in here and see exactly what we have to fish with. So uh, this is gonna be a shallow water pond. The water looks pretty stained this morning. So we have a Lucky Craft crankbait. We have a jig, all right, a little jerk bait. It's fall time. I'm pretty sure even in a small pond like this, I'm pretty sure the owner stocks this with some type of shad, so I'm pretty sure that's gonna work. We got a, uh, you notice that what I like about Mystery Taco Box is they always try to make the box go along with the season. Most of the time in the fall time of the year, the fish are feeding primarily on shad. You see there's three shad profile lures in this box already. And here's this, the third one right here. This is a Bill Lewis SB57, another square bill crankbait. Pretty sure crankbaits are gonna have to play this year. We got some soft plastics, some more shad profile swim baits. And of course, you always need something to help you rig these baits up. So they uh, put a, a pack of spear point EWGs in here. I've used these guys before. They really stick the fish good. And of course, like always, you know what? They always put a lot of literature in here to tell you how to catch fish, how to use the baits that are in the box. It tells you a lot about tips for catching fish in different conditions, lure selections for different water. So in your downtime, when you're not actually fishing, go into the, to the instruction manual that they put in the kit. It'll help you out a lot. It'll answer a lot of the questions that you may have. Let's take the box down here to the boat, slide it off in the water, and we'll be off to fishing today. Well, let's see here. What do we want to start off with? Uh, some plastic in here. Now, I think I'm gonna start off with this little jerk bait here. This just looks like the perfect little guy. You know, it's small enough profile. You know they're gonna be feeding on shad. But it's a small enough profile to where I think you'll be able to catch like if there's any panfish or crappie in here and I think I'm going to actually tie it on my spinning rod so get my cutters out so I'm actually going to tie this guy on my spinning rod here um, I usually tie a palomar knot that's the easiest knot to tie if you're wondering what knot, knot you should be tying just all around for everything. The Palomar is going to be super, super easy. I'm sure Mr. Tackle Box has plenty of knot tying tutorials on the web channel, on the website there, or on the Mr. Tackle Box YouTube channel. You guys check that out, and I'm sure you'll find plenty of knowledge on how to tie a knot. So there we go. So a little Strike Pro jerk bait. We're going to start off with. We'll just work our stuff around the pond and see what we can catch with it. There he is. That's a big one. Oh, God. I don't know what that is, but that's a big one. That's a big one, whatever it is. I don't feel like that's bass. Oh, God. Whoa, that's a freaking giant. Dude, that's a freaking giant. Holy smokes. Look at that thing. Whoa. Holy crap, dude, on that freaking jerk bait. Holy crap, he's gonna flip the kayak over when I go to grab him. Oh my God, look at that thing. Y'all, that's a heck of a first bite. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that. Holy smokes. Whew. Will you look at that? That fish is every bit of five pounds. Oh my gosh. Holy, I can't even hold him right how big he is. 
Jeez. Oh my gosh. Well, that's unexpected. I don't even know how I'm gonna get him. I gotta figure out how to get him. Get the hooks out of his mouth. See, that's a big one to start the day with for sure. I got a pair of pliers somewhere if I can find them. I got a bit of a conundrum going on here. The pliers are sitting on my lap the whole time. How about that, guys? On the Strike Pro jerk bait. I'd say that's a big one. Look at that thing. Whew. That is a big one. I'm going to let him go back. Jeez. That's a big one, guys. You can see why I used to fish here and why I got addicted to fishing right here in this pond. I was just throwing the little jerk bait around the dock here. First bite, over five pounds. I think we're going to have a good day today. And it might be hard for me to use any other bait than that Strike Pro after that bite because that got my juices juicing. You know what I'm saying? There he is. Another one. Another one. Oh, oh it's a crappy. Crappy. I told you. Didn't I tell you? Oh, he come off. I caught a, that was a crappy on the little jerk bait. I knew I would catch one on that because it's just the perfect size for crappy. I knew one would bite this thing. I knew a crappy would bite it. They just, I got a little bit too stiff a rod for crappy. They don't typically like, uh, their little mouth is so thin that you know, a medium heavy power rod is going to be a little bit much. You're going to rip the hooks out of the mouth every time. But this little jerk bait, I see you, Stripe Pro. There he is. Bass. Oh, is that a bass? What is that? God, dude, he was so long. He was so long and skinny. I, I couldn't tell what it was. I thought, I was like, man, it looked like a speckled charl at first. That's another bass on the uh, Strike Pro. Now, I'm going to explain something to you here in a little bit about where we're catching these fish. Even in a pond, a lot of times people think fishing around a pond is just going in circles and you just catch what you can catch. But you can actually pattern fish in a pond. Right now, uh, where I'm fishing is, I mean, it's a very high percentage area. And let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what it is and how you can try to catch more fish in the ponds and small bodies of water where you fish. There's definitely a science to it. There he is. There he is, man. Feels like a little better one. It is. Dude, they are smacking that jerk bait today. That's something to always remember. It's in the fall. Whoa. I didn't think he was that big. Oh, look how long he is. In the fall time fish are almost always i don't care if you're in a pond a river a creek whatever the case may be they're almost always feeding on shad so this little box what i love about these little mystery taco boxes is they have like this month there's four shad profile baits in there it's swim baits soft plastics and you got three hard bait selections so you know that just makes it easier for you to learn how to catch fish on baits like this that's probably a two, two and a half pounder right there. That's fun. That is a lot of fun. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a few more casts with this and then we're gonna swap up to some of the other baits because there's some baits in the box that I, I've never used before. Uh, and I wanna see if they'll catch fish too. Maybe we can catch, you know, it, God, we, who knows what we might catch today. I might catch a personal best today. There he is. There's one. There's one. Oh, look, we got a jumper. <laughs> we got a jumper today. He's a jumper. Whoa. <laughs> oh, so you think you air bass? Oh, oh, he's going to get hung in the bottom of the boat. He hit my kayak like he's freaking jaws or something. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. He's got all types of hooks in his face right about now. How about that? 
<laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. I like those kind. So I just caught that one. That one I actually caught out in the middle. There's a big pole in the center of the pond. Something you always want to pay attention to. Now, it doesn't matter if you're fishing a lake or whatever, but anytime you see like some type of marker, a lot of times when they back up a pond, when they build up a pond, they'll put a marker in a high spot. It may be some type of culvert. Most of the time that pole is marking something. It might be a stump, it might be a high spot, it might be the deepest part of the pond. But never leave that untouched. Whatever you gotta do to get a bait out there. If it's out of reach and you're fishing from the bank, you know, today I have the luxury of fishing out of a kayak, so I'm a little bit more maneuverable. But let's say if you didn't have that luxury, you could always tie on something heavier. Tie on a lipless crankbait. They usually throw really far. Uh, tie on a Carolina rig, something that you can get out there and zoom a long ways and try to reach out and touch that obstruction, what you see, that, that little object or structure, whatever it is, because you never know what's out in the middle of a pond. You never know what the, what the builder was thinking when they built the pond. A lot of times, that's marking a little honey hole. All right, I think it's time to try something a little different. You know, I think this little crankbait seems like the hard baits are working good today. I've got some soft plastic stuff in there too, but this is a this is a SB57. This is made by Bill Lewis. This is the perfect color for this time of year too. I'm not sure what color they call this. Well, let me tie it on right quick. I got this on 15 pound test fluorocarbon line. That's what I'm using today. It's 15 pound test. You could use, you know, like eight or ten with the with the crankbait preferably i think nothing less than 10 pound test is probably best personally but this particular color right here is called sneaky shad wow they over here calling them they got special names for their baits but let's put this back in we're back pretty sure we we, we shouldn't have a problem catch if they'll hit that that uh bait that i was using earlier they ever hit that uh, little jerk bait, I feel pretty confident that they're gonna smash a, a crane bait today because the fish seem pretty active this morning. You can see there's like some kind of little pole or something right out here in the middle. I'm gonna run my crank bait across that, across that, uh, I think there's a high spot right there is what it is. There he is, there is one. I'm a, oh, that's a good one on the crank bait. That's a good one on the crankbait, SB57. <laughs> well, I didn't mean for you to jump that much, but if you want to, that's okay with me. He's barely hooked. Let me see if I can get down to get him. Let me see if I can get down to get that fish. I'm just going to boat flip him. I'm just going to kayak flip him. Yeah, SB57. This is a really good crankbait. I like the shape of this thing, too. We'll take a little closer look at the crankbait here in a minute. That's probably two, two and a half. Dude, we'd be working on a little tournament sack, a little sacky sack if we were fishing a fall time tournament. This is what I'm throwing right here. SB57, Sneaky Shad. So what I like about the Bill Lewis products is these, all their, all their baits now come with really good hooks. These are Mustad triple grip hooks. You know, they've got the wide gap that bends back in so you can keep a fish pin good. And the cool thing about the uh, SB57 is it, come with, it comes with a circuit board lip. So this thing's super tough. You, I mean, you could bang it against rocks or docks and concrete, and it's, it's probably not going to break. It's hard to break those circuit, circuit board lips. But um, it's got the perfect little bitty shad profile, but it gets a little deeper than your typical square bill. All right, so the bite seems to be slowing down a little bit. So what I'm actually gonna do now is we're gonna take a look inside my box. And uh, one, one cool thing about Mystery Tackle Box, obviously everything that's in the box, you can use, like they, they pair stuff up in there that you could really just take that box and that's all you would need to go fishing. But the other thing about it, you can be creative. Take some of the baits that you, uh, that you have already and mix and match them with the things that you have in the box. So that's what I'm gonna do now. But anyway, um, we're gonna take the crankbait off. That just doesn't seem to be producing like I want it to. Had I, had I got on that a little bit earlier, I think it would have been great. But I'm actually gonna take the jig and I've got some more baits in my box. I'm 
we're going to use as a trailer. So in my these are baits that I already have in my box, and we're going to we're going to see if we can catch some. That's the perfect little trailer right here. This is just a little creature bait trailer that I'm going to put on the back of my jig. And when I get all this rigged up, I'll, I'll show it to you. I'll get a little closer and show it to you. Just cut it down about three or four egg sacs. We'll put it on the back of the jig. We'll flip that around. This is what it looks like right here. You see I got a little kickers on the bottom of it. And this is just the jig that came in my box, just like it is. I didn't trim the skirt or anything. It seems to come about the perfect length. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swim this guy. I'm not actually going to fish it on the bottom. I'm going to swim it around some of the wood that I see in the lake. There's a dock or two in here, believe it or not, too. And uh, just kind of keep it up high where I, where I can see it. And there's also some shallow flats. You'd be surprised how many fish you could catch on a shallow flat just swimming a jig like this over like a, a clean bottom. So let's see how this works. There he is. There he is. Swim jig. Oh, come up on the swim jig. I watched him come up and get that off the wood. That's how you adjust. I've, I've fished this spot a couple times a day and didn't get anything. Look how he swallowed that guy. And it's mostly because the sun has gotten high and they've gotten off those hard baits really. Uh, and I, I noticed I wasn't getting quite as many bites and I swapped to, uh, to a swim jig, something a little bit more subtle profile. And first piece of wood I come to, I already got bit. So there's a few more pieces of wood back out here in the back. We'll go swim this jig around this and see if we can get one or two more bites before the day's up and it's, uh, it's time to go pick up kids from school. There, there's one right there on the wood. All right, there's one. <laughs> Dude, that's the deal. That is how you adjust right there. Now, I fished that pole, I know at least twice already today. Not a bite. Swapped over to the jig when the sun got high and now you're starting to get, get bit. Like that's to me, that's what's fun about fishing is figuring out like put, coming out here and putting the pieces of the puzzle together. This is no different. You know, you see us tournament guys in like really expensive boats a lot of time. And really and truly guys if you don't have a boat or if you like even if you don't have a kayak you can break down water like at the end of the day fishing is fishing and i had to basically break down this pond in the same way i do when i'm out tournament fishing on a 60,000 acre lake or something like okeechobee this i think it's like 127 square miles of fishery to fish so fishing is fishing you can practice and learn how to catch fish on a small body of water like this, the same way I do when I go to big bodies of water at fish tournaments. All right, guys, it's time to call it a day. I'm gonna put the boat on the bank and uh, drive the truck back around so I don't have to drag everything all the way around the pond, but this has been a fun day. Make sure you check out the links in the description box so you guys can subscribe to Mystery Tackle Box. If you don't remember anything else from this video, it's two things. Always break down small bodies of water, just like how we have here. There's always more than one part to the puzzle. Most of the time, this isn't just a big bowl that can be the case sometimes but you can always pattern fish there's always a way to figure out how to make those things bite no matter how tough it is secondly what's the second thing i forgot what the second thing is oh check the link in the description box it wouldn't be a youtube video if you wouldn't check in the link in the description box and or the comment section i'll try to make sure i'm in the comment section to answer any questions you guys have about the baits or the techniques that i that i use today to catch some fish so i hope you enjoyed the video make sure you go to my channel as well my name is just brian latimer that's my youtube channel and uh check it out i've got a lot of videos tips from how to use baits to tournament vlogs to just hanging out and doing everything outdoors so appreciate you guys watching the video today we'll pick up the babies and i bet they're gonna want to come back and go fishing today after they hear what i've done today see ya